Hey there, everybody. Fett here, and welcome to Fett Plays the Darkest Dungeon. I've played the Darkest Dungeon a couple of times. It's a fantastic game from Red Hook Studios. And, uh, if you can't tell, we got a particular save we're going to play. The first one was the Ragamuffin, 61 weeks, I believe. That is the one that I actually had beaten on stream. Or not, I don't remember for sure. Uh, but we're going to be playing Thets, Thoughts, and Thieves over here with, uh, little, you know, a few mods. All the DLC. You know, we're going to have some fun with it. Got some great mods from uh, a couple people like Marvin Sale here. Um, I'm going to have a full link to the Steam collection in the description below. So if you want to grab these mods, feel free to go into the description and we'll take them for a spin. Didn't want to do the regular game again, but... Uh, we decided to go ahead and spice it up with some spicy mods, let's just say. Let's watch the intro sequence again, because I could watch it like 300 times. I love it so much. It's so good. A little loud, but very good. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell. But in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Mmm, my skin's crawling. I love it. It's just oh, expert narration from Wayne Jr. Not just expert narration, but expert writing as well. Like, their use of descriptive words are so good. Anyway, with the stagecoach destroyed and the caretaker gone, we'll have to make our journey to the hamlet on our little footsies here. Don't worry, I think we're going to do it. Let's find out. Hey, reynolds has got a nice, smooth look to him. All right, now, we, we, we don't need to worry about the tutorial. I'll tell you about how to dark your dungeon here in a little bit. We got Dismas and Reynold. I didn't have to name them this time because that's their default names, in case you were wondering, you know... If you watch any of the other series and you're wondering where those came from, there you go. So you get a map down here, you click on a room to start walking to it, and then you walk down a hallway. Run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. Yeah, you move side to side. You can even make yourself dance. Alright, Cutthroat, you've been surprised. Battles turn based and also flickers a lot when you accidentally click um, outside the screen. Pretty great though. Desmus coming in with a strong bleed. Look at this man go. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Just the easiest double tap. The easiest 1,000 gold I think we've ever made in our lives. So we got some good attacks here. Looks like Reynolds starting off with Smite, Zealous Accusation as is tradition, Stunning Blow, and Bulwark of Faith. I believe he pretty much always starts out with those. Which hey, I'm not complaining. He also always starts out as a uh, God-fearing warrior of light, object. who also... There is much to be found in forgotten places. Yes, I know. It's pretty great, Wayne. Uh, also has a kleptomaniac streak to him. He's prone to stealing stuff. Don't worry about it, though. Dismiss is starting off with open vein, pistol shot, grape shot, and tracking shot. Lots of shots. He does much shooting, An I guess you could say. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. Blood letter and a fusilier. That's not a good way to start out this fight. I don't appreciate that. Please. That's great, actually. Okay, bullets. Bullets don't work, John. They just don't work. All right, one good thing to know about the Darkest Dungeon. Health is, like, just a phase. Stress is where the worry is at. You know, they say, uh, you know, certain things are just a state of mind. Here, no, state of mind is, like, all important in the Darkest Dungeon. Because stress carries you, carries with you, I should say, throughout missions. Oh, that hurts. 
And crits mean extra stress, which is not good. Unless we get the crits, then we relieve stress. That's pretty good. But as it is, you know, Reynolds kind of feeling the burn and not in the fun way. Please don't. Ooh. Thought you were going to hit me with a point blank shot. Would have done major damage. But instead, I'm going to take him out with the weakest attack we have. The bigger the beast, the greater the glory. Just because we're a team of jerks. A shovel. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? All right. Quest done. We could continue adventuring. But if we open this, this is literally a bandit's trap chest. As it says, it's trapped. So there's no point in opening it. Uh, by the way, um, Dismas has open vein. Lets you bleed people. Pistol shot lets you shoot people. Grape shot blast lets you shoot multiple people. And tracking shot lets you shoot someone. Destroys their stealth. And also buffs up Dismas's next couple of attacks. So there you go. Welcome back to the dungeon. I guess the hamlet first, but you know what I'm trying to say here. Got some monies. Got some crest. We're having a good time. And look at that. They didn't get any positive or negative traits. What a dull and boring survival we'd had there. Set it back to the hamlet and try to spice things up a little bit. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now. That is a you are bound to them. lot of bosses. That is a lot of different classes. Oh, my lord. Woo, we got some work to do. All right. I don't need your help, please. Here's the graveyard. It's pretty great. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. Yeah, well, he said. A lot of people are going to wind up here. Maybe you'll be named after one of them. Trinkets and charms gathered from all the forgotten corners of the earth. Hmm. Blue Lantern is modded in. We don't have 10,000 gold, but if we did, you know, extra HP healed if the torch is low. That's pretty neat. Extra stress of the torch which is high. That's less neat. And this is the jeweler. You can apparently can help you out with debris from a comet. I haven't actually done much with this Color of Madness DLC, so that's all going to be fairly new to me. I'm excited. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Yeah, our ancestor here, he's the one who, um... He goofed up, let's just say. I don't know if I'm actually spoiling things here or not. I haven't actually looked through these that closely. Um, he goofed up quite bad, and now we have to fix it. Basically, he went into the darkest depths of his estate. He found something he shouldn't have. It drove him crazy, and now we have to fight back a whole bunch of Lovecraftian monsters. It's pretty great. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Welcome to the stagecoach. This is where we get new dudes. Right now we got Bonell. Better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield. See, we'll look at the quirks in a little bit. And we also got uh, Malben. We can rename them later. A sister of battle. Pious and unrelenting. She's uh, looking pretty swooed in uh, Galactus Purple here. I like it. Let's go ahead and upgrade the stagecoach so that we get three heroes next time. More arrive, foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain of the damned. So we know that Reynold is a god-fearing kleptomaniac who's also a warrior of light, which means he does more damage with High Torch. Dismas here, he's got a hard head. He resists stuns a little bit better. Quick reflexes, he's fast, and he's also a known cheat, so he's not allowed to gamble. You dinkus. Bonell here has second wind. If her HP drops low, she gets damage. Clutch hitter. If her HP drops low, she gets crit. I mean, that'd be great on a Reynold, but not so great on a Plague Doctor. I mean, I'm just saying. Love interest. will only visit the brothel for stress relief. Well, that could be a problem. Malben, our Vestal. Evasive. Good dodge. That is just a 10 out of 10 quirk right there. Meditator. Improved stress reduction while meditating and while camping. That's also, like, pretty good. Necromania. Hmm, curious. Curious necromania. Two things that don't go well together. She might goof some things up a little later. I also don't like their attacks from what I'm seeing so far. Bonell has Plague Grenade, which is amazing in the back row, because it bl it does a blight. It's kind of like a poison to the enemies in the back row for four points of damage for three rounds. Battlefield Medicine. It's a 
slight heal, but it also cures blights and bleeds, which is great. Emboldening Vapors is a buff to someone else, or to herself, I guess, if she really wanted to. Speed and damage buff. Disorienting Blast will get rid of corpses, and it can also stun, which is not that great either. We're not too worried about the camping skills yet. We'll come across those, you know, when we can. Mace Bash sucks. It's a basic melee attack for the Vestal. Healing is good. This is a single target heal. It's stronger than the party heal, which is this. And then Illumination, which bypasses stealth and doesn't do much damage, but it does raise the torch a little bit, which will be a mechanic we can get into a little later. Problem is, Malben's best... Oh, actually, Bonel can go in the back. Yeah, and then Malben can go... Yeah, we can do it like that. That'll work. Positioning is important. Don't get it twisted. Let's embark. Let's go on a journey. Of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. Look at all these choices, man. We got the darkest dungeon, of course. We're not going to go there yet because we don't want to immediately die. Uh, we can go to the ruins. We can test the depths. Uh, the warrens, the courtyard, and wield and cove are all from the regular game. Um, well, courtyard's from DLC. So is the farm set. That's also from DLC. This is where the comet fell. We can't go there yet, but soon. Um, yeah, these will open up later. Sunward Isles is directly from a mod. I look forward to that opening eventually. And the Hamlet is also directly from a mod, and apparently there's a Rift Dungeon in there. It's a hardcore challenge. Retreating will result in the destruction of several building upgrades. So if you're not ready, don't do it. We're not going to do that for a while. But still very interesting. I look forward to going here and seeing what it has to offer eventually. I think you can do regular quests in the Hamlet as well. For now, though, we can choose between scouting the ruins or skirmishing the ruins. Which basically means explore 90% of rooms or kill... 100% of room battles. Ooh, field dressing for the Slayer. Class we have not seen yet. Extra healing received. Extra stress healing received. Or we can get from the scout mission a dodge stone. Which is more dodge but less speed. I think that's going to be better. So you know what? We're going to go in the order I described here. Which will be the Red Hook team. Pretty great. Let's get ready to provision. This is where we give our people stuff. The preparedness. Measured now in gold, later in blood. This is just to make sure, you know, we don't immediately die. Apparently we can get a minor Omomori, provides the entire party with mediocre protection against yokai for two turns. I think that's only going to be useful in one specific place. So I guess we don't have to worry about it right now. We're going to get some food, though. Food's good. Get a shovel, just in case. Eh, yeah, I'll just one. Because it all costs money, and we don't have infinite money. We get a free anti-venom and holy water, thanks to... I believe the holy water comes from... That doesn't give us an example here. I believe the holy water comes from the Vestal. And the anti-venom comes from the Plague Doctor. I know that, 10 out of 10. Uh, let's grab a key, just in case, and then some torches. I don't think we're going to need anything else. In fact, we probably don't even need eight torches. Let's grab four. It's a short mission. We're not going to be there forever. We don't need any laudanum. We don't need any holy water. We got some. We got some free. Medicinal herbs... Don't need it in the ruins. You'll see why. Let's get ready to embark. So the ruins, it's pretty great. It's mostly undead. And the Crusader's really good at taking out the undead. It kind of has that holy smite to him, which does extra damage to things that are unliving. Here we go. Here's our layout of the ruins. We can start exploring now. A little bit of starting stress for our new people. That's just normal. Unfortunately, not much you can do about it. It's like we start with a little torchy torch here. Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. Thank you for your support. And do we have a room battle? We do. Alright, we gotta explore 90% of rooms, which will probably mean all but one room. Not that that's a bigger problem. Bone rabble or weak? So is Dismas, apparently, at least when it comes to his shot. What was that, my actual friend -o? Uh, Emboldening Vapors. So I'll just guarantee Reynold can get a one-hit kill, I think. I guess we're going to go with Illumination. We don't exactly need heals right now. I wish this had a chance to stun. But, you know, a little bit of quick damage. A debuff. Minus 20 dodge. Not that they have any dodge to start with. Easy one-hit kill. So when someone... When an enemy is killed without a critical hit or by bleeding or blighting, they leave a corpse. See, he was killed by a regular attack, he left the corpse. To avoid corpses, we can make enemies bleed out. We can make them blight or poison out. Nice shot. Or we can hit him with a crit. 
Jade is just gold. Creatures can be felt. They can be beaten. What do we get? A shovel, onyx, and gold. I like it all. Excellent, says Reynold, and I agree. All right, we got a blockage down here and a battle in this hallway. Can't really avoid it because we really literally only have one way to go. It's a curio over here, which could be good or bad. And there's treasure in here, which, yeah, they both have room battles. That's no surprise. We'll probably go for the treasure and then just head to the right and maybe do a detour for the curio, depending on how we're feeling. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. This is why you always bring a shovel. At least one. Because otherwise you have to dig that out with your hands and it, you'd get hurt and it'd suck. Just don't do it. Hello, cultist. How you doing? She does stress. I hate stress enemies. And she also reduces the, the torch. Yeah, the torch goes down whenever she does that. Also not good. Uh, the torch going down can affect how quickly you get stress, how much accuracy and damage monsters do, how often they crit. You can see it right here. How often we're surprised. Higher the torch, more likely we are to surprise, but the less loot we get. So, ah, jeez. A lot of people will do low light runs. Get her. Yeah, she'll bleed out or blight out in three turns guaranteed if we can't kill her sooner. A lot of players would prefer to do, you know, low torch light runs. Me, I'm going to actually buff up the torch here. Yeah. And they do low... Ooh, that's not good damage. Low torch light runs in order to... Executed with impunity. Get more gold, because you get a lot more treasure when you do that. You know, let's spread the love. Grape shot blast. Actually not bad on damage. Okay, she's going to blight out next turn, so we can ignore her for the rest of this turn, but Bonell back here is seeing some seeing some slight problems with her health. Let's go ahead and actually use Disorienting Blast. It'll get rid of the corpse. There you go, and Stunder! Now that she could attack next turn. Bada bing, bada boom. We are technically done, so I think it's healing time. A momentary abatement. Yeah, just tiny heals for everybody. There's always a chance... Gently. This hmm. is how Something to read. There's always a chance that a heal will crit, which does double heals and gives you some stress relief. So I like to spread that around when we don't actually need the help. Blackest of Fates, three of five. The assault was overwhelming. With Cuthbert slain and his bowlin fell, I was driven by rage. I leapt and drove my axe into the creature's many eyes. Purple Igor splashed my face and my very soul shook as it bellowed. The only thing I can recall after was... Falling swiftly into blackness. Take that, turn that into gold if you don't mind. Nothing in this room. No extra scouts. Got some extra backgrounds from mods as well. Some of them look pretty darn swoop. Reynold. Oh, he's taking my stuff. Oh, he just stole a key. Could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. He just stole my key. It's alright. Not the worst. We need a key for this one, but luckily we came packed with one. Battle time. It's a little dark in here. Don't worry about it. We got a cultist brawler up front. He likes to bleed people. But I still hate the stress dealer. She's still going to be my focus. Mm, her dodge is so good. Now, can you not rend for the old gods? I'm not a fan of the old gods. Oh, don't. Oh, how much stress I get. That's not good. That's not good. That is not... That is not Bonell's best position. Oh, this is bad. Uh, heal? Because that's all you can do. That was a really good heal, though. That was about best case scenario for the heal. I think Dismas can Grape Shot from here. And that's what I want him to do. In fact, I'm going to up his damage so that hopefully he does a stronger Grape Shot. Don't pull me, bro. Oh, jeez. Nice resist on the pull. I love it. Nice dodge. I love it. Nice heal. And he heals not a one is great. This is... Wow. Therefore, oh, my God. Maintain the offensive. This round has been pretty darn close. Ooh, baby. Even with the pull, we're kicking ass. Oh, except we can't hit this damn acolyte for anything. Don't. All right. She's got 15 more stress before she... uh as a mental break. I'd rather that not happen. Hi. How you doing? You ready for a case of the dead? Keep doing it. Oh my god. 
This vessel is amazing. Oh my god, this acolyte is in the goddamn matrix. I can't touch her. Dismiss, please. Wait, uh, can he do anything from there? I don't know if he can. Oh no. She's spreading around the stress. Oh yes. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Good lord. That was stressful. Throw a key into this chest. It unlocks a hidden compartment. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Use a couple of torches here. And move on. I mean, a couple busts is all right. Bust, Curio, or not Curios, um, Crest, things of that nature that hurt. Carelessness will find no Ow. clemency in this place. Stress and damage. Um, all the heirlooms like that are used for upgrading, which is pretty great. We'll collect more, I'm sure. Uh, scout? No scout. We don't know what's down this hallway. Let's just go this way. Maybe there won't be a room battle. Who knows? We've been, we've had a pretty rough time of it so far. Fortune hmm. Waiting to be spent. It's a lot of food, though. Eat that for health. And we need to eat now, right, right now. When that happens, you can either choose to eat or choose not to. And if you choose not to, well, it's not good for you. All right, we got to explore one more room and we're done. Um, yeah, you lose a lot of... You lose a bit of health and a lot of stress if you decide not to eat. We have another shovel, right? Yeah, I bought two. I am the smartest... I'm the dumbest man. I have out of torches. <laughs> and out of keys. And this fricker is here. The born Bone Cordier. And he's immediately going after my Plague Doctor, who's now at 100% stress. So at 100%, you do a stress test. She failed, and she's now irrational. Yay. Gasping. Taken over the edge into madness. Nah, I love it when they reflected. Um, afflicted has, like, negative things, like this... Irrational is lowering damage, for example. That's okay, we can still up others' damage, so I'm gonna up Raynal's damage. If it stress gets to 200. Hmm, this is not a good fight for Dismas. If her stress gets to 200. Ho oh, ho! What a champ! She has a heart attack and she loses all of her health. But don't worry about it. We're actually doing quite decently with Dismas getting that crit. I don't like the Arbalest, though. Their chances of. Jeez, stop talking to Dismas. You're giving him all kinds of stress. Tiny animals under glass, smaller than stand. She refused to heal. That's okay. I wanted to give it to everyone else. You have health anyway. Mortality clarified in a single strike. Can you? First of all, can you stop talking about his injuries every time he gets hurt? And two, can you stop picking on Dismas? The lob lolly is dead. Oh no, nobody liked that. That's okay. We're still doing... I mean... You know what? Use this. Bring him to the front. Yes! He can't shoot from there. At least he can't shoot as well. So this is perfect. Uh, let's do a tracking shot. Give Dismas a little bit more strength. The defender has a decent amount of health, and he has some protection, which lowers how much damage he takes by a percentage. And at higher levels, they also like to defend their allies. Thankfully, we just uh, kind of shut him up. Dead weight, that's a possible stun and a knockback. And she got both of them. Hopefully that shuts her up for a turn. It looks like it did. Thank God. Ooh. No, Dismas is just coming in with all of the attack power in the world. It's too bad that, you know, we got like 40 points of stress just because our Plague Doctor wouldn't shut the hell up. So we didn't get anything out of that. I think I'm just going to leave. Yeah, we if we had someone in the party who could help with stress relief, I would stay and do some more battles and try to get stress down. But as it is, nah. Cutting your losses is a very important tactic in this game. And I'm going to take it when I can. Thank you for my eight bust and four crest. I appreciate the support. And the Dodge Stone, which will probably, maybe, possibly come in handy. And everyone has extra quirks this time. Let's see what happens. I do have to solve Bonell's Irrationalism. You can only do that with Stress Relief. So, we'll see how that works out. Reynold! Soft! Oh, God, that's just a straight 
HP debuff. That's awful. Sunward Adventurer. X minus stress in the Sunward Isles. Well, I guess I know who I'm sending there first. Dismas. Asthenic? What the hell does Asthenic mean? Yeah, I mean, it means minus 15% crit chance, which is absolutely god-awful. But I've never heard... That is a word I've never heard before. Um, Lygiophobia. Extra stress if the torch is too low for our Vestal. That's not too bad. And a Bonell. Skilled Gambler. Extra chance of winning something while gambling. That's actually pretty good. Okay, Asthenic is apparently... Relating to, involving, or suffering from asthenia. So, you know, that literally did not answer my question. <laughs> okay, let's head back to the town. Let it load. And then we can actually see some of the new things. Apparently... There is a great horror beneath the manor. A crawling chaos that must be destroyed. Wait, did a quirk already become severe? Severe quirks are much harder to remove when we unlock the building that can remove them. So that's scary. It lives. An experiment to challenge the creator. Forged by dead parts. The creature is giving new alive. However miserable it be. I don't know what that means. Asthenia, by the way, is apparently abnormal physical weakness or lack of energy. A.K.A. my existence. Yep, love interest is locked in, so she can only go to the brothel for stress relief. Fantastic. At least no one else has anything locked in, which is good, because I want to get rid of softness as soon as possible. Let's head to the tavern. Fresh kegs, cards, and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. This is what you're going to do to me. First recording. Okay. So we're in the tavern. Tavern has the bar, the gambling hall, and the brothel, places where you do stress relief. As you may know, Bonnell has a love interest. She can only go to the brothel for stress relief. But guess what? My chuckle nut frickin' caretaker's in here enjoying the activity right now, which means I can't put anyone else in the space. You actual ass weasel. How do we fire him? Please, where's that button? I could upgrade it. I'd have to put like two points into it, I think, which is going to be a lot of portraits and crest to have a second slot open, but... Man, I'm not happy. The bar would be okay for someone as well, but obviously I can't put Bonell there. Uh, we're going to see who we'll take on the next mission and then put everyone else into stress relief as we prepare to do that. But all of these cost money. Uh, there we go. Like a thousand for Dismas to go here. He can't go to the gambling hall, of course. Um, the bar has a chance of losing you items or money. So does the gambling hall because people are kind of doofy sometimes. Let's go to the Abbey. The cobwebs have been dusted. The pews set straight. The Abbey calls to the faithful. Of course, you can upgrade these two. The Cloister for meditation. The Transept for prayers. The Penance Hall for flagellation. In case the only thing you think you can do to make yourself feel better is hurt yourself. Um, don't forget that our Vestal is a meditator, so she'd be really good in here for stress relief. Finally, let's check out the stagecoach. Ooh. These are new. Well, actually, this guy's not new. The Occultist is already here. He has a unique quirk. Woo! Blacksmith. One hero per roster. That's so totally new. Minus 40% weapon upgrade cost. Minus 40% armor upgrade cost. That is actually, like, really new. He also gets 20 stress when idle in town for a week. Holy crap. And Fengiophobia. Plus 20 stress if the torch is too high. Other than that, he's an occultist. That's pretty good. Occultists can be great healers. This guy comes with Weakening Curse. Which lowers damage and protection on enemies. Weird Reconstruction, which has a chance to heal by zero or by a lot. Also has a chance to cause bleeds. The Vulnerability Hex, which can lower dodge and also mark the targets, which are helpful for other players. Uh, other seekers, champions, heroes, fools, whatever you want to call them. And Demon's Pull, which you can use to pull people and clear corpses. Cool! And they're all free to take, so yes, I'm taking all of them. To fight the abyss, hmm. one must know it. That's neat. I wonder what skins he has. Because I got like a bunch of new ones. I like the... I kind of like the yellow one because it made it look like he had a bit of a tiger stripe thing here. Did I see a yellow one? I did not. I'm just losing my mind then. Dang. I think I saw the green one and I just miscolored it. Anyway, this is good. That's good. And now we got a couple of new classes that are modded in. The Slayer. 
Look at this guy. Oh my god. Ruin Scrounger. He's good in the ruins. Graceless. Minus 20% dodge multiplier. Interesting. So it's at minus 20% from wherever it starts. Very interesting debuff. Running gun. Let's see. Does damage. Hits two people in front. Uh, good crit chance. Like, kind of. I mean, it has a little bonus. Self buff. Bound for glory. Plus 10% damage. Nice. It also moves them back by one. You can see the back one there. Interesting. Reeling Reload moves forward by two. Uh, minus 70% damage, so it's not a big damage dealer. Pulls the enemy forward by three. And also gives them a Bound for Glory accuracy, deep, or accuracy buff. Okay, so he has a lot of self buffs. Tag and bag. How fun. Uh, no damage. Marks the target. And also makes it so the target takes 12% extra damage from everyone else. That's awesome. And it ups its accuracy. At least I think it's from everyone else. Finally, Bound for Glory. You can use it one time per battle in the near the front. Um, let's see. Minus 20% damage. Hurts himself by 5 HP. Or at least there's a 33% chance of that. And then he debuff. He takes double damage after using that. That doesn't sound that awesome. Maybe it looks better than it is? I don't know. I mean, he can he can make himself stronger with running gun, so maybe you just do that a couple of times. Maybe he has another move that's unlocked that might be better. I have no idea. Either way, we're bringing him along. Vupont. Do you have any skins? You do not. And finally, the Seraph. Ooh, look at you. And she does have some skins. Nice. Ooh, I like the red. Accuracy for range skills. I mean, could be good. Let's see if she has any. Bad healer. Minus 20% healing skills. Hopefully you're not a healer class. Vindicate. Straight up damage. Look at... Wow! Plus 150% da extra damage against marked enemies. You'll work well with the Slayer. Or with our occultist. But it also takes away the mark, which I don't even care. That's so much extra damage. Vengeance. You can only use this if you have below 33% HP. It's a melee attack that does damage. Has... A good crit chance, it looks like. Ups the torch by 10. Extra damage against the marked enemies. Activates Repost, or Ripple if you prefer, uh, which means that she strikes back when she's hit. Can't be guarded, and it breaks enemy guards. Holy crap, that's amazing. But yet, you can only do it at low health. Visage, stuns enemies. No damage. Other heroes get stressed for six rounds. That's not that great. I mean, the stress is not that great, but it could be good. And then finally, Brand. Bypasses stealth, marks the target, gets rid of enemy stealth, lowers speed, ups torch, does a little bit of damage. She's going to be a great frontliner. And she doesn't have heals, so it works out for us. Anyway, I want to go ahead and actually just see who we're getting next time. There's a strange glow at the farmstead. Okay, apparently a uh, the comet's impact was felt there in Hamlet. A great impact toppled gravestones and kicked up a cloud of dust that covered the entire region. When it finally settled, an eerie miasma was seen to spread from the mill. It distorted the rules of time and space far beyond imagining. Venture to the miller's farm to see what has been done. So, we could go here and do that if we wanted to. Ah, uh, there's a homunculus here. A failed one. And if you do it, you get potion X. 20% damage to melee skills. Wow. But less healing and stress healing received. Okay. I can see how that's interesting. So, we got a new, a new team. We're going to figure out how we're going to send them next time here on Thet Plays Darkest Dungeon. With mods, of course. Oh, we might go to the Hamlet. We might take on... We're probably not going to take on this thing until we get some more level ups, I think. We should be able to go there at level two. Otherwise, this is just a little too nuts for me right now. But we'll see. There's a lot of options. I don't have a progeny, so I don't know what that does for me yet. But if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to let me know by giving a like. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe for more because it's going to keep coming. It probably won't stop coming, at least until it's over. Until then, thanks again for watching. That plays Darkest Dungeon. My name is Thet, and I will see you in the next video.